Well, welcome to another edition of Tech Time. I'm going to talk about some repairing capillary lines and some soldering, welding, brazing tips, as you would call it. Um, if you need to take some notes or you want to send some uh, questions, please do. Sign up again for our other webinars we have. No we'll promise we'll keep this one short today. Thanks a lot. Uh, Jim Stradlin, part of the technical services team. Uh, information is there if you need to get a hold of us. Um, we're hosted by Entertech University, uh, entertechuniversity.com. Go to our YouTube, Entertech, U Inter Entertech University. Um, we got a lot of trainings and all our tech times are there. Um, here's some more uh, members of our team. Uh, here's the Entertech University page. You can make sure you get into what we call the playlists. And when you click on the playlists, you can go and see all the different programs. And these are the ones where the, all the tech times are located. So though, today I'm going to share um, some products and a little bit of practices uh, when soldering or brazing refrigeration system leaks that may occur in geothermal units as well as other refrigeration appliances. We all know leaks happen from transportation means, bouncing trucks, um, parts rubbing or manufacturing mistakes. Not all leaks are from soldering or brazing though. Uh, many different ways to do these repairs, but today I will show you some of my learned techniques and products that I have used in my career. Uh, this is a good uh, note to know how Intertech has, what products they use and how they actually solder the different types of uh, welds that are inside our geothermal heat pumps. Uh, so all our plumbing you can see is done by uh, solder, such as Stabrite number eight flux. I use an OD number five paste. Uh, Flux they use also use the stay clean and liquid flux for copper to brass. Flow switch tubs are brazed using a Dynaflow, which is a brazing rod. All our refrigeration tubing is brazed. Braze rod, Dynaflow for copper to copper, copper to brass connections, uh, brazing rod, safety, safety sill 45 for copper to stainless steel. And then they use a flux called stay sill black flux. Uh, stay sill also makes one with a white flux that works as well, the uh, black is used, works a little bit better on higher temperature soldering uh, projects. So either one will work. Um, which is kind of interesting as I didn't know is Entertech actually has a flux inside their flame. So they got a double duty to try to make sure all our welds are, are good and clean. Now, I think um, one of the most important tools a technician should have are called mirrors and a flashlight. After every single weld, you should double check with your flashlight, with a light. Some of your lights are on the mirrors and the mirrors. A lot of people don't look and that's how mistakes happen or the pinholes uh, come about. Uh, as a technician, we always know mirrors break in your toolboxes. So I used to always carry a, a two. I always had an extra because every time you needed one, you would see that it, something was broken. Um, again, standard tools of the trade that you need after you're done soldering, uh, vacuum pumping, use nitrogen, filter dryers, uh, tubing cutters, and a vacuum gauge. All standard operating equipment should be on all service trucks. Um, safety, again, I preach safety considerations. Uh, do you carry a fire extinguisher in with you when you're welding or soldering? Do you have a wet rags, a pail of water with you there? All things that I would recommend that you do to be safe. Uh, and for the reasons is we don't want to see any homeowner fires. I'm sure your bosses don't want to see any of that either. And again, we don't want to end up court and see a mean judge like we show, like I'm showing here today. Well, uh, here I have um, a leak that was found in a copper cap tube. This was an external equalizer line, which is kind of typical. Um, if you read your manuals, they always tell you to look at all the piping, all your wiring, make sure nothing is touching, make sure nothing is rubbing. And some of that stuff gets shifted to move, you know, from transportation. You can't solder this one together um, because you're going to probably plug up the hole. So uh, it's always recommended with a cap tube to use a file and make a notch in it. Don't go all the way through, but make a notch. And um, this is how I was taught uh, and used in my career. Make a little notch, um, bend it back. And so you'll see they'll break it apart and there's still uh, open holes in there. So you know that you haven't plugged it all up. Um, that's why you want to make sure that both ends are open. You don't have any um, little burrs and stuff in there. You want to make sure that's clean. 
Well, now you're going to make a coupling, say, out of another little piece of copper, and you can use three-eighths, quarter-inch, whatever size you have. Make sure you clean it up uh, really good. And uh, sand cloth, um, a lot of people use emery cloth. They use uh, scouring, Brillo pads. Um, when you get that all done, cleaned up, take your plier, um, pinch the lines uh, close to the edges there like that. Make sure the tubing is shoved in through. Um, works out really, really good. Clean all the parts after you're done pinching them. Clean up again a little bit to make sure you get a good, clean contact for the uh, brazing rod to get in there. Now, what's important is a lot of people realize that you have a couple different types of flames. This is kind of a standard flame, but when you're welding refrigeration products, um, you want to use what's called a carburizing flame. So you want to use more acetylene than oxygen. And this helps promote um, not ox oxidation, not getting on your joint, and helps make it be a better uh, fit, better weld, solder, however you want to describe it. So um, the top little line is called Dynaflow, or it's a sulfos brazing rod that's typically used for copper repair um, and some of the other products you saw. But a lot of people don't carry uh, silver solder. Okay, Silver solder with the flux I mentioned, um, is used in the application, which I'm going to show you here in a little bit. So when you're uh, doing your soldering, which is really important, as you can see, I actually have done it so you guys can see this. But what I want to make a uh, note to people to realize that with your torch, when you're using your torch, make sure you're not heating the small part first, but heating the back part. And I used to always heat the back part and let the solder flow in. So now when you're doing that, um, back your torch off, back your torch off farther, reduce the heat on there and lay a bead so that you can look and see this, there's an actual bead over the top that goes all the way around. So you can tell by the darkness of these that it has been soldered and that the, the solder has flowed in because this is all part of some of the solder. And so you know you're going to have a good quality joint. Do this on both sides, but the biggest thing is back your torch off so you don't less heat and lay a nice bead around there so you're sure everything is covered. All right, so let's say you got an expansion valve and the capillary line broke uh, for the external equalizer. Well, as you see, uh, Emerson's TXVs that we use quite a bit of nowadays are made out of stainless steel. So now you have to use a different process of soldering these. The same principle which I just showed you with the copper to copper um, will work with this, but just with a different type of solder. Um, so again, we want you to score the stainless steel line, um, and you're going to break it in half again, like we showed before. Uh, you cannot fix and repair the power head one because that's got a special gas charge in it. So it doesn't pay to try to fix that. That's when you'll need to replace your expansion valve. So similar type of repair, as you can see, I've, I've cleaned up the stainless steel uh, tube, uh, run flux around a piece of copper, and I'm going to uh, crimp it in uh, tight, and then I'm going to add more flux around it again. Now, remember, less heat is needed with silver solder. This is more similar to your regular soft solder plumbing joints. But again, it's the same scenario. Um, keep your torch aiming away from the small tube because you want the solder to be sucked into the pinch section and then back away your torch. Again, back away your torch tip and uh, remove, re reduce the heat going through there and you can lay a nice bead like I'm showing on that one there. So again, you're done doing these things, especially with this uh, silver solder, scrape it off because you can get some residue of burnt um, paste flux and you may miss a leak. So we clean that off again, then use your mirror and double check and inspect the solder joint. Again, most important things, tools of your trade, visually look, make sure you got a good soldering joint and uh, go through your process of evacuation, micron gauge, nitrogen, uh, should be flowing through the tubing while you're doing your soldering at a really low pressure. Uh, make sure it's open going through and uh, use your proper techniques that you've used and uh, you should be set and good to go. Thank you again for attending. Uh, University, Intertech University uh, link is on there. If you have any questions or submit 
to us, uh, technical services at intertechgeo or intertechusa.com, and uh, give us any suggestions you would like to, to see on our tech time. And we appreciate all of you guys for uh, tuning in. Have a great day.